Hi, I'm Steve Lanfitt, and welcome to Sure in the Saddle. In this episode, we're joined with Frankie Lovato. Frankie, how are you? Good, Steve. This is one of my best friends. Frankie is the developer and inventor of the Aquasizer. So in this episode, we're going to have Frankie tell us a little bit about the background. We keep getting emails from you guys asking us about the Aquasizer, the benefits of the Aquasizer. So the simplest way to me to do this is we're having a show. Frankie right here. He's going to show us the shop and tell us how the Aquasizer got started. We'll be back right after this. Maggie and Mocha. Maggie and Mocha. Good old Mocha. This is the first one you ever... Is it really? Yeah. Mocha's the one that we... It's been around a while. Yeah. 300,000 miles. 300,000 miles. No, no oil change yet. No. <laughs> Frankie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself so everybody knows how you got started in this and how we developed the Aquasizer. Well, you can notice I'm not a really big guy, so, no, so it all started with horse racing. I was a jockey, uh, starting back, um, my career started in 79, 80, okay. um, and which was a long time ago. Uh, anyway, I had I did have a bad wreck and I messed my leg up pretty bad. I had to have several operations where um, I had to kind of learn how to walk again. Okay. Um, one of the things that the doctor had, had said to me um, was, well, it, it's not a matter of when, because uh, your first question is, when am I going to be able to ride again? Right. So his answer to me was, that it's not, you know, when, it's if. So it scared the heck out of me. Um, and the, the rehabilitation process, when you walk into a, a, a state-of-the-art rehab room and you look around, there, there's nothing in there that's going to simulate right. or anything that, that's going to be like a horse. Right. Um, and they had me doing some things that, uh, that was not really going to answer the, the question of that, that scary part of if I'm going to ride again. So, um, long story short, uh, as I got as I started to get a little bit stronger, a little bit healthier, my knee was completely locked. So I actually needed something that, that I could sit on that was in the shape of a horse just to try to get some of that movement back right. in my leg. Um, and that was the first equisizer. I, I built a horse. It was basically it, it was nothing like it is now, but it was um, it was. It was the barrel of a horse that had a neck and a head, a set of reins, and something that I could actually put a saddle on, um, which is with the equisizer. I mean, basically, that's the, the main concept of it. So, so uh, I mean, otherwise, we're almost going back to, like, uh, the Black Stallion movie, the, the Bale of Straw with, with Mickey Rooney on it. Yeah. That, I mean, because, so, that's your only other alternative was doing almost something like that. That when I, when I was a kid and I didn't I didn't have access. I mean, you want to ride as many horses as you can. I didn't have any access uh, to horses at a young age. So yeah, I was riding bales of hay, straw, um, the couch, anything that I could pretend that, that was a horse. So so when you're saying you're a jockey, you're you're being real modest here, and, and I wanted you to sort of segue into what you are. So tell us a little bit about your history as a jockey, because this isn't just you know a guy who's a little bit shorter than me coming up with the equisizer. Tell us who Frankie Lovato is. <laughs> okay, well. Um, when my career started out, it was it it, it was great. Um, my father, I, I, my father also was a jockey, uh, was a well-respected uh, jockey for many years. Um, but when I got into the game, people already kind of had their eye on me, um, and I, I, I had some of the best uh, help and resources. Um, but along with that, you still got to have the, the skills, the potential, and you have to work so hard to, to maintain or gain those opportunities. Right. Um, like any business. Like any and, business. Um, but I mean, I, I was red hot. I hit it uh, big. I hit it fast, and and um, I ended up being in. I was in the top ten in in North America of all jockeys, but uh, I was the the apprentice of the year, which is like the rookie of the year. It's like okay. winning the Heisman Trophy or okay. something. Okay. But I won the Eclipse Award, which is the highest achievement highest achievement award you can win in horse racing. So now that we're in the shop, give us a little tour and, and show us how everything's starting to sure. you know to put together. Because here's our final product. Yeah, well, these are my demos. Uh, right now, this is Maggie. This is Mocha. He, Mocha is part of the family. Yeah, he, well, I, I rode Mocha. <laughs> Mocha was probably my first one that I rode. So, yeah, yeah she, she, ten she, years ago. Yeah, she, and she's looking good for ten years. Yeah, yeah. And but she's she's autographed, autographed by everybody. by all those yeah. famous horsemen that we come across, including yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, but over here, just so people can get a little bit of an idea, um, these are these are where the head start from. And this is basically, I buy these long, it's select pine. It's a, it's a New Zealand cut type wood that's a, it's, it's a highly, high so high dense pine with no knots. Right, and it's a clear, so it's, it, I buy it in big planks, I cut it down, 
um, it gets marked and then I, I draw it out. Right. And um, it gets all glued together to make one block, one silhouette of a horse head. It, it turns into, when, once the clamps are off, that's what it looks like. Okay. From, from here, uh, once it's, once it's, it's basically carved out, and, and I can show you the power tools and things that I use, yeah. but um, it ends up to this stage. So, I'm, I'm going to stop you up real quick. This is all just freehand. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's freehand, so I don't have... Besides a jockey, apparently you're a carver. With I, I had to learn to do did, this. Did you? Okay. Because nobody else was going to do it for me. Which so. is really cool, because out of necessity came... I mean, this is pretty cool, Frankie. Thank you, thank you. So when we get orders, and, and, and we can go over that process too, Kayla will be in the office, a customer will call, Okay. Um, they, they would like to place an order, they can decide on a couple of different models that we make. Um, this is the Elite where it's all customized, so okay. uh, they can pick the color, um, they can pick the markings, they, they, they can pick the color, of the, the several different colors for the, the carpet that I use, Okay. a uh, very strong, high grade, uh, marine grade carpet. Okay. Um, and then uh, the facial markings, a lot of stuff is airbrushed on and finished, and I can show you that in, the, in okay. a minute. Okay. So I'll use hand tools, power tools, uh, dremels. You can see some of the, the ones here lined up that um, that I'll use to to get the, the the effect or the shape that I want. Okay. And I mount it onto the the clamp, clamp down here so I can work and well lit exhaust fan so right. I can breathe. Pretty cool, Frank. The, yeah, these are the Dremels with different bits uh, that help um, you know help me cut the, you know, all those little tiny areas like the eyes and the nostrils. And okay. All right. Show us how you do the the, the, the custom painting. Okay. So this is my little paint area. Over here, we have we have a classic model, which is our, our basic model um, that doesn't have all the fine details. But um, in this order, I build the equisizers in sets of four. Okay. And um, this, uh, these three are elites, and you, you can see with, with the, like this is actually a, a horse that I'm making. Someone. That's, that's actually the story. Yeah. Right someone ordered. Someone ordered Zenyatta. Okay. <laughs> it's a famous racehorse. Um, so uh, the the process is basically layers of polyurethane. Um, it gets stained certain color depending on what color they order. Right. But this horse will be dark bay, black. Okay. Kind of these are bays. Okay. Um, but it, it gets stained. Um, my assistant Kayla, she helps me with this process, thank goodness. But it, it, it gets stained and then layers of polyurethane. Um, okay. It co several coats. It gets sanded between each coat. And then the final coat uh, will be the airbrushing and then the final coat will get a nice spray on it and a uh, nice finish. And then this hole here is for the it's where, where it will mount onto the equisizer. Okay. And then this gets plugged and covered. Okay. And then the forelock, and you won't even see it, you won't even know it's there. Okay. So the forelock in the ears. Gotcha. All right, show us the next step. Um, these are the side rails to the Elite. These are what cover the base frame. Um, and it has our logo on it, but these also have several coats. They're finished and, and stained to match the horse's heads. Uh, these are going to be the nameplate plaques, right. uh, handles, and some of the, the bearing components. This is the, the Equisizer is actually set up on its butt right now, but I'm in the process of doing all the upholstery work. So the bodies get covered. They're, they're underneath here. They're built kind of like a boat. Okay. Um, so they're contoured. They have the, the like shape. That. Yeah, you can see the you can see the shape, the bends in the wood. Okay. Um, and that gives it some of the lifelike, you know, uh, so it feels shape like a horse. of a horse. And then the padding and then carpeted. So it's got got several la layers. Uh, when people use these, they, they can either put a, any saddle they want on them, or they can ride a bareback, right. or they can use a bareback pad. Well, you've got a bareback pad. Right. right. Uh, but when they're using them for therapy, therapeutic purposes, sometimes they just lay a sh they may even just use like a, a cloth or a sheet. Okay. Um, and this gives them a nice, a nice surface to, to work with. They're, they're, um, whether they're clients or for therapy, could be small children, could be adults, but they'll actually use it for not just riding standard, but they'll do, they'll do different positions. Right. And even have them lay on their backs. Uh, now, when these, we're talking therapy, you know, so that everybody understands, this isn't just therapy at a hospital. We're, we're, we're dealing with you know, children and adults with Down syndrome, 
Uh, yeah. Uh, you and I, is a, is a big yes. Yeah. You, you and I, a couple of years ago, were at Hoosier, and we used the exerciser as part of the Make a Wish Foundation. And I always put the kids on this as well. But who else uh, uses these? Well, we have. It's it's just it, the list is so big. Well, of course, of all disciplines of riders, so. Um, we'll have riders of English Western disciplines. Right. Could be could be polo, could be dressage. Um, we have a lot of people that that may have gotten away, away from riding and, and had their children and want to get back to riding. And so this is a great solution for them to, to prepare themselves, get their muscles back in shape. Um, we have some people, unfortunately, that are no longer able to ride real horses, and they still want to ride. They want that fix. Right. You know? um, that that is really we have some wonderful people that have done, you know, the, the stories are great. They ride in their living room now. So. Right. You're not, I mean, I mean, this has probably been for a while now, but you're not just a, a U.S. company. You're shipping, yeah, I mean, because we just yeah. went through the list right up there. Yeah. Uh, give me some, some, some other places where we're shipping. We to. get inquiries from all over the world and places that you would, you can't even imagine. Right. Um, like we did this year, this year alone, I think we've, we've sent to about 12 different countries. Okay. But from Norway, Germany, um, Singapore, Japan, uh, Korea, um, Qatar, uh, the Middle East, uh, other locations in the Middle East, um, Saudi Arabia, okay. um, South America, uh, all over uh, North America and like Canada. And, and, and so the Equisizer isn't, which started off just for, because you were using it to Equisize, yes, yeah. to, 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 to race, has crossed over now almost every genre. Yeah. Which is really cool. It's amazing. We're a small company, and, uh -huh. and not too many people still. I, but you I, never I, go on strike. Right, now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, uh, but it's amazing how we'll have someone that will will, will use the equisize, or let's say a family with a child with with cerebral palsy, um, and they can't understand how does a jockey use this, right? Or how does a how's a polo player use this? How does a dressage rider use this? Like they have no concept. Like. I don't get it, uh -huh. um, which is kind of, it's interesting, it's right. kind of fascinating, but it, 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 a dressage rider can't understand how somebody with cerebral palsy or other disabilities use right. someone from racing. When we go to a, and we do an event, we'll put three different saddles on them, uh -huh. and people say, I don't know how to ride, I don't know how to ride, ride English. Right. And so, well, <laughs> That's good, there's a western <laughs> We'll just do that, it's, right. it's just, it doesn't matter. It basically, it gives everybody just the basic essentials of a horse. Um, it doesn't buck or or, nope. or you know duck or, or jump, it, but no. it gives you the basic essentials of speed a horse. Speed builds low. Speed builds way low, right. and you can ride in your pajamas. And right. uh, it, it actually feels like riding. It gives you opportunity to exercise, have a little bit of fun. It's healthy too. It's really good, nice core exercise. That's why it's a lot of the therapeutic riding programs, even though they don't, they they may or may not specialize in equine assisted therapies. Right. Um, they still see the benefits of, of being able to have that core strengthen that Well, core. what's neat about putting this in, in a lot of those different programs is if they're not uh, an equine related program, they could put this in the classroom. Yeah. This could be right in the, in the office, in the rehab, uh, next, next to the treadmill. And, and gives that wide range of, yeah. of, of abilities to you. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm, pr I'm proud to say that our local hospital has a re rehab uh, department right. for their children, and they have one there that they use. And uh, none of them have any experience with real horses, um, they, but they, they know how to use this as a tool, as, as another uh, strategy in their room of right. equipment. That's, re that's really cool. Uh, what's this over here? Oh. <laughs> People ask me all the time, is it real horse hair that you use? Right. And no, it's not. It's a synthetic material. Okay. Um, and I buy it in these, in these large rolls that I can cut into sections for like the forelock, the mane. Um, customers, sometimes they want a short mane, sometimes they want a medium mane, sometimes they want a long mane. Um, depends your preference and, and what type of discipline you're riding or you know, whatever you want. So 
Uh, along with that, I also custom make custom colors. So these different colors, um, like I was showing you before we filmed, we, someone that ordered a sorrel, um, or this is kind of a, a dark sorrel, but this is mixing a variety of these colors together, uh, very similar to how they make wigs. Okay. Um, they take different colors and they actually rake it. And what I'll do is I'll take several different colors and I'll mix them together and they'll get raked over this like several times. This could take, for one section of, of uh, main, like or this could be the same as a forelock. Um, I mean, this could take me, this could take me five, 10 minutes to get it just right. But I'll have to do this. Uh, you can see it start to mix it's in there. Now this would be a very bright sorrel, which I wouldn't normally, don't often do. But it's really kind of neat, the effect that you can get out of it. But this has to be done for the mane, the forelock, um, and the tail. Yeah, look at that. See, it's looking more and more. More, right. It's mixing up more and more. You don't have that, that line in there. So we met about 10 years ago. Yes, sir. And it was at uh, Equine Fair in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and at that time, you were promoting more for exercise, correct? That's right. Well, we went over to Frankie's booth. And right now, there's two of us sitting here riding, and the coolest thing, and this is where the people at home wonder how someone like me gets involved with Frankie. And I'm gonna tell you, this is one of the best training aids that I feel that I've come across. Um, I could help so many riders with this who have never ridden a horse, get them on a horse, and teach them you know, that proper heel, hip, shoulder, air alignment, teach them the proper hand positions. Um, you can teach them to sit to the outside of the horse when they're riding, how to center them back up, you know, how to change sides, leg positions. Uh, we were we were at Equine Affair this last April, and this was 10 years later, and we did a whole demo utilizing the Aquasizer to teach the use of the spur, how to use a spur and things like that, which was really funny. We ended up with a packed house and, and it was supposed to be in a lecture hall, and truthfully, I didn't know how I was going to talk about the use of a sport in a lecture hall. And it was the Equisizer was there, and it was the best training aid because we answered so many questions. Well, I just, like, one of the things that I learned so much when my, my whole life was horse racing, and I never was exposed to any other disciplines of riding. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned from my own, my own product, I don't want to sound like a commercial, but, it's, um, it's but what I learned from spending time with you, for example, and, and your clinics and things, that you, there, there's a lot of uh, language and a lot of things that um, when you when your your brain, okay, right. and especially mine, because I, I I may not be the sharpest pencil in the box, but. Um, <laughs> Either mine, <laughs> so that probably helped the situation. Go ahead. But when uh, we 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 had a funny story going back to your horse rope. Right. And when I was oh, riding oh. rope in a circle, <laughs> and and it was it wasn't a safe experience. It wasn't, no, it wasn't. It, was a, it wasn't the smoothest. But um, the inside, when you when you talk about inside leg, outside leg, you um, had no clue what I was talking. Yeah, about. You block the shoulder, raise your hands. All these things, I actually, I was so frustrated um, that I, I didn't, not only that, I didn't understand it, the language, but my muscle memory, I, I, I was a very good jockey. I, oh, I, I know that. Yeah. I was a very good jockey. I cannot, I could not ride a horse. Like, well, you, you, we were going in a circle, but we didn't, we weren't on a track, okay? We were just talking in a language that you were used to. Okay. That was it. And, and, uh, the Equisizer, and, and that brings up the point because I could show before I ever get a rider on a horse what to do with their legs, what to do with their hands. And because the Equisizer, we're creating that motion, okay, with our seat, with our pelvis. And I had this gentleman put his hands here, and this is what he started to do with that horse. And all of a sudden, he realized that he was hanging on his horse's face. And he looked at me, and he said, son, I've been riding my horses my whole life, and I've been doing it wrong. And I said, uh-huh, because now I have that elastic feel. So this is, this is the best training aid because I am not just teaching a beginner rider. 
I could teach advanced riders. I've used this to teach flying lead changes. I've, I've used this to teach canter departures. I've used this to teach a stop. Okay. Um, we There's videos with us doing uh, practicing polos right now yeah. out on the field. So in terms of the... Uh, wide array of things that you could use to teach in terms of horsemanship, whether it's Western, whether it's English, whatever, whether it's a jockey. Uh, I, I think it just it, it blows my mind how much I could sit here and depending on that rider's level to sort of nitpick. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank I you, appreciate Steve. everything. If you guys have any questions about Equisizer, you want to purchase an Equisizer, give them a call here. Otherwise, check us out on stevelampet.com. Shoot us an email. Otherwise, we'll see you next week right here on Sure on the Saddle.